Warning, warning, the following video takes painful and traumatic incidents from history and totally makes fun of them grinding the blood, sweat, and tears of a noble generation into the grist of youtubeness <laughs> for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> I raise these things down, but, but I never think of how they're going to actually sound. <laughs> Let me redo that. Warning, the following video takes painful and traumatic incidents from history and totally makes fun of them grinding the blood, sweat, and tears of a double generation into the grist of YouTubeness uh, for your uh, viewing pleasure. As such, this video is almost guaranteed to offend someone, uh, so your discretion is advised. Uh, also, I want to say that I love almost everything about Japanese culture, so if I make fun of you, it's not because I don't love you, because I do. I love almost everything about you. I could probably go on about, oh, I don't know, your festivals and you know, your food and, and uh, you know, um, uh, I, I, could, I could go on uh, and on. I love almost everything about you, except for the fact that in World War II, you were total dicks. Uh, so I don't feel all that terribly bad about the poking fun. Uh, of course, afterwards... Uh, we Americans became total dicks too, far worse than you, uh, and we've been dicks ever since. Uh, consider this part of the never-ending consequences for your grandfathers having been epic asshats at one point, and take it for what it is. Entertainment. A few laughs. That's all. Just a bit of fun. Payback, bitches! <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it's just a bit of fun. Um... And um, and if I if I offend people, um, I am sorry, and I'm giving you here this warning ahead of time, so that you'll know that you probably will. If you're prone to be offended by, um, you know, this sort of thing, you probably will be offended. So I'm just giving you a heads up. Of course, if you're really prone to be offended, probably you wouldn't be watching this at all, uh, because <laughs> I'm, I'm just a, I'm just a walking series of offenses against all sorts of things uh so um uh, there's, so there's that so you know if you are offended i'm sorry um it's all in fun uh and um and with that no further ado uh let's go ahead and uh grind the blood sweat and tears of uh, uh our greatest generation into entertainment for you yeah Greetings, humanoids of the internet. My name is Bob, and this is episode 58 of Journey into Space. Journey into Space. Really, in a sense, this isn't uh, an episode of Journey into Space because it's a total and absolute divergence from uh, what I've ever done before in Journey into Space and what I'll be doing in the future. So it's sort of like uh, a... I don't know how you, it's sort of like a special diversion from what Journey into Space really normally is. Um, so I could have um, made it its own se separate thing and not call it a episode of Journey into Space, in which case probably nobody would watch it. Uh, or I could make it a episode of Journey into Space, uh, but with uh, the all the numerous caveats I have put in up to this point, because it's really not. For the, the, probably the only episode of Journey into Space that's not even remotely about space. Or or aircraft or anything. Uh, it's about boats, if you want to call it that. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, sort of imagine, imaginatively reinvent a battle from World War II. Uh, a, a specific uh, sea battle from World War II, a carrier battle. Uh, imaginatively, because we're, we're going to be t taking lots of liberties with history here. Uh, so, uh, Im imagine it as sort of a cartoon version of a World War II Pacific Sea battle. Uh, with only two ships. <laughs> like it's, it's, It would be too much to, to try to actually assemble a whole fleet. I mean, it's, it, I've been yesterday and today just trying to get my aircraft carrier to work right. <laughs> so, I still haven't landed a plane on it. Uh, so, uh... And I, I'm actually not uh, ready for the main event here, uh, but I figure why not uh, go ahead and try to uh, and show you the the setup that I'm doing for it, and then the the actual thing itself uh, maybe a separate episode. So this is the uh, making of 
uh, the um, Battle of the Kerbal Sea uh, episode. Uh, so uh, I still have actually a lot of work to do, uh, but it's been a while since I've released a video. So I figured I might as well show you what I'm doing, you know. Uh, hopefully um, uh, this won't won't uh, ruin or spoil, give you a, too many spoilers into what the actual episode itself is going to be like. Um, so I don't think that's going. I don't think that's going to happen really. <coughs> what I'm doing is I'm showing you all the stuff that I'm doing to set up for that episode, if you will. This is the making of the B uh, Battle of the Kerbal Sea episode. And all that was just way too convoluted, and I apologize for that. All right, this is what will be the uh, American carrier <coughs> in that battle. I had a hell of a lot of time, a uh, hell, uh, hell of a time, a lot of trouble uh, getting this thing to work right. Uh, using this thing as the command module, uh, it would become non-functional. Uh, so I actually have a robotic uh, command module on here, which means there's nobody actually on here, um, and that worked. Uh, so. Uh, how I'm going to land these little planes on, on the carrier deck, I have no idea. Um, but we'll say this will take that as it comes, uh, using a lot of quick saves and quick loads. Now, part of the reason why I've been a while, um, the center. <coughs> part of the reason why I've been a while uh, between uh, before, yeah, between my last episode and this one. Um, it's not because I've not been working. It's because what I've been working hadn't been hadn't been working. <laughs> what I've been doing has been working. Let me uh, load up. Uh, my initial thought for the for what this next episode was going to be would be that it would be a uh, sort of a revisitation of the um, interplanetary space plane uh, episode, which is still my most popular episode. So I figured I would. Uh, I would uh, do that, except um, unlike with that episode, uh, which used a lot of mod parts, uh, I would do this one uh, with uh, with all stock parts except for the Keithane mod, because I figure if I'm going to the trouble of landing a space plane on Lathe, I might as well be able to refuel it when I'm there. So this is the Medusa 17. <laughs> as you can see, it's just a little bit complicated. Uh, just just a little bit. Um, I've gotten as far as uh, getting to the release of the first stage, which is these uh, 24 jet engines. Uh, got those uh, released away and and uh, and uh, that all fine. Uh, gotten as far as uh, getting this stage all done, uh, but but for whatever reason I'm I haven't gone quite beyond that. So uh, so. This may still be in a future episode. Uh, it's a reasonable, very reasonable possibility that it will be in a future episode. Uh, but I was the, 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 working on this monster was wearing me out to the point where I thought, you know, I really need to take a break from this. Um, so I, I watched, and I have to give total credit to uh, Robus, Robus uh, King of Sweden, uh, who uh, did the the, um, uh, the did a video on the uh, carrier mod and and. Uh, also, the airplane mod, uh, the propeller airplane up mod, uh, and I thought that was so freaking awesome. Uh, and uh, Robos is the king of all the Swedes, and all praise and glory go to him um, because he's freaking awesome. He is the funniest guy on YouTube. Seriously, funniest guy on YouTube. No, no question about it. Uh, so uh, I have to uh, give Robos um, credit for stealing his idea, uh, which I did, but. What he didn't do in that episode is actually stage a naval battle. So, so I figured, well, that's the next step, isn't it? You know, we've got aircraft carriers and Kerbal Space Program now. We need to have uh, actual naval battles. So that's what I'm doing, um, is I'm actually staging a Pacific War naval battle, a, a cartoon version of a Pacific War naval battle uh, in the Kerbal Space Program. So, and let's see what I'm doing. I, what I'm doing next is I'm going to try to land uh, a aircraft on uh, the American carrier. That could be problematic. I have separate airplanes for uh, the uh, uh, the Allied and Axis sides. I think the uh, Axis plane is the uh, Axis fighter Tiny. 
make sure. I think that's probably true. As you can see, this has a propeller on it, um, which is a very, very cool mod that they have. Um, uh, it has a few glitches, but not too bad. Uh, it has this bomb here, which is unfortunately very tiny. Uh, so the, the use of the bomb is only going to be sort of the, uh, the, uh, the appetizer, as it were, um, for the uh, attacks. Um, it's got uh, air brakes. These are very cool. These are air brakes. Um, uh, good, especially, uh, especially good if you're trying to land on a carrier or trying to do a dive bomb. Uh, very cool to have. And both the Allied and Axis uh, fighters have them. Uh, so let's go ahead and load up the uh, Allied fighter. Uh, the propeller is not that strong, so you, know, you have to kind of, um, kind of uh, not have a very large aircraft or have multiple engines. Uh, unlike uh, in real life, in the beginning of the war, um, the uh, Allied fighter is actually slightly more maneuverable, but it makes up for that by having certain takeoff issues. Uh, same bomb for both both sides. Not not a very strong one. We'll get into stronger bombs later on. Um, this is the uh, the uh, American uh, one, and then since we have the American carrier out there, we'll go ahead and uh, launch this one and try to get it. Uh, landed on the carrier, which I am not feeling terribly optimistic about that happening, but we'll see. Uh, and this aircraft has uh, some significant uh, takeoff issues. In other words, it sort of veers wildly out of control a bit. I thought I moved... Monomini, Monomini Kerman somewhere else because uh, I was uh, he's one of my test pilots and I was actually going to spare him I think from the uh, the agony of war but I guess not <laughs> I guess he's uh, I guess he's going to war okay Mooney money Monemony uh, yeah see what I mean about takeoff issues it's a good airplane otherwise but yeah it's got some significant issues uh, as far as uh, takeoff go. Yeah, it's still a couple clicks away. Okay, here I hear it is. I see it. You're down. Yeah, this is gonna be hairy. And I'm pointing the wrong way. No, I'm not. Shit. Well, dry run. I, I saw that little deck piece in the middle and thought that was the uh, the, the jump at the end, um, and it wasn't. So. <clears throat> I'm really loving this mod, um, the propeller mod. I haven't even tried all the things that it has. It has helicopters and shit too. Uh, very awesome. Uh, but I haven't tried them all. I've been working on trying to get an episode out. So, uh, but uh, very cool. Very much looking forward to playing with it. There are some planes that, that I need to make for this for the for the. Uh, Battle of the Kerbal Sea episode that I have not made yet, and so I'll get get to play with some parts of uh, parts of it. Uh, and I'm totally fucked up for trying to land on this bitch. Not gonna happen. No shit. Wave off. Wave off. Wave off. I really give you. A, of course, this this carrier deck I think is probably a bit smaller than the. The most real carrier decks uh, in terms of relative to the size of the aircraft, but uh, gives you an appreciation for what carrier pilots have to go through, man. This ain't this ain't no easy shit. <clears throat> Especially not when you're carrying a freaking bomb, you know. Not 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 easy at all. Uh, I'm going to screw it up again. Yep, did make it. 
Uh, the plane is larger in comparison with the carrier than I thought it would be. Oh, the uh, the propeller engines also reverse, um, which is kind of cool. Unfortunately, this cockpit doesn't, you know, get a view out, uh, so I would be tempted to actually uh, do it from a cockpit view uh, if that were possible, but uh, not so much. Okay, come on. <coughs> Stay on target. Stay on target. And as soon as I actually land this bitch, if I ever do, nope, nope, not landing, not landing like, not landing like that, nope. And my speed is fairly much not uh, not going to work too well. I actually have to get the speed down um, before I get to the edge of the carrier. Uh, let me work on this a bit and we'll, we'll see if, if I have a run it looks like it may be successful I'll let you know okay could be hairy could be very hairy I gotta stand by on my air brakes uh, whoa don't don't, fall, don't land the drink please I stand by on my air brakes uh, for if I get over the edge of the carrier deck I can whoop 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 Okay, that wasn't so good. <laughs> okay, I realized that I needed a much larger carrier deck uh, than what I had. And this is a much larger carrier deck. The only way I can really steer this thing is to uh, shut down these side engines pretty much. I'm going to go a little fast. Let's go and kill it. As you can see, it's quite a behemoth. Looks like I got some uh, struts kind of hanging off the side there. It's okay, I don't care. I am beyond caring. Gravy. So. Brakes, brakes. Are the brakes non functional? Brakes, brakes. Uh oh. That could be a problem. Alright, now, my throttle still work? Uh, in previous uh, iterations of this, um, of these uh, things, uh, the uh, throttle had a tendency not to, to stop, or the, the whole thing would stop being functional. Uh, but I think that was because of the, the I was using the uh, the uh, uh, that as the command pod. Uh, I've got a robotic command pod on now. Right, shut that down. Okay, well, despite all the um, hewing and hawing, uh, appears that uh, it's gone out here reasonably successfully, uh, and it's going to take a long time for it to get uh, where it's going. So uh, uh, I will we'll restart when uh, we get closer to uh, our destination. Oh, frack me! I, I don't believe it. I think I actually may have done it. I need to get it backed up because it's kind of sinking into the uh, sinking into the uh, tarmac here. I'm hoping you know, I'm not going to damage anything. Uh, as you can see, I, I use the uh, air brakes. I uh, got that set it up to action group too. Uh, very very useful. I was actually somewhat surprised that I was able to uh, 
to make it uh, work to actually make it land uh, problem here is that uh, I'm fixing to rip off a wing here if I'm not careful uh, let's I'm gonna back up my quick save and then quick save again okay well we had some significant technical difficulties um, uh, but we are on the deck uh, I just need to get it uh, get it uh, parked I mean, backed up and parked uh, and uh, don't roll off the deck please <coughs> and uh, that will be this is the um, uh, Japanese carrier uh, so I'll have the uh, Japanese carrier set up uh, and then I can um, I'll move on to doing the same thing with the uh, Amer American carrier uh, and then I need to make the PB PBY for the uh, <coughs> first scene uh, where I did actually detect the uh, Japanese carrier so uh, but we are making progress progress It's a missile hydrofoil. <laughs> Why did I make it? Because it's there, I guess. Yeah, and it will be magnificent if it actually works, which is very unlikely. Um, See, so here are the foils right here. I've had to extend these long, gankly legs in order to get it out to um, somewhere where I can... Uh... Oh, and that's not good. Yeah, <laughs> these legs are not... Not right. Um... So um, it's sort of unlikely to, to actually uh, work at all. Uh, if it does work, it'll be glorious. Okay, here we go. Trying to delicately hit the brakes so that uh, the legs won't break on impact on hitting the water. Okay, let's get it down a little bit. Okay, that's good. Weirdest boat launch ever. <laughs> the legs actually float. What a trip. Yeah, buddy. We're hydrofoiling pulling now. Alright, let's uh let's crank it up. I I, I didn't use the the hydrofoil that came in that boat kit because uh couldn't have figure out how to make it go. So I'm just going with this. Uh and this could go dramatically south at almost any moment. Okay, so far so good. A little bit tilted. Uh, sort of maneuverable. I still need more support in the front. Okay, max speed. Uh, around 40 um, meters a second. Yeah, I need more support in the front. Okay. Here we go. Another flirtation with disaster. Um, I still haven't gotten a a, um, a uh, oop. still haven't gotten a uh, aircraft on the uh, Allied carrier yet. Uh, I, I landed one, but there was broke. It, it kind of broke. <laughs> broke on landing. Yes. Okay. Uh, turn on flight control. Uh oh. No, I'm gonna miss it. Yeah, I'm not making it. Okay, swing around for the pass. Uh, uh, nope, 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 nope. Air brakes off, please. Thank you. Yeah, I managed to get a a. a, a on the um, uh, axis carrier uh, 
Still working on the allies, though. <laughs> Another one bites the dust. Jeez. Uh... <clears throat> Once more into the breach, dear friends. And... More than one way to crack that egg. Breaks. Alright, god damn it. I finally got it there. Holy shit. God damn it. Okay. Well, oh, there's a little rut air aileron or whatever sitting there. Uh okay, well we've got it finally got it on there, so I can move on to the next thing. Jeez Louise. This aircraft has caused uh, unknown, you know, or unknown. It has caused a, a lot of trouble, uh, which I, I thought that this, compared to, you know, carrier landing, uh, that this would be this would be easy breezy, but it turned out actually to be fairly tough to do. Um, these engines don't have a lot of power. Uh, the wings that come with the uh, mod uh, don't have that much lift, um, so there was a, quite a few complications. But uh, we've got it, this uh, this uh, done now. Um, and uh, it doesn't look that much like a PBY, which is what I was trying to aim for, but it does sort of look like a PB, PBY. Got these little blisters on the side. <clears throat> anyway, um, that's all uh, for this episode. Uh, hopefully, uh, next episode, I'll actually be able to do the battle, you know. Uh, I, think I've, I think I've got everything done that I need. Whoa. Bagging. I think I've got everything done um, uh, that I need to. Oh, there's a carrier. Let me check it out. Access carrier. Okay. I think I've got everything done that I really need to. Uh, uh, as far as preparation goes. Uh, yeah, pretty much. More or less. Kind of. So, um, that's uh, our episode for this time. Uh, and until next time, hasta la vista. Adios. A revolution in a uh, propeller driven. Blah, blah, blah. A revolution in propeller driven aircraft. The Flyotron. Flyotron! Flyotron, go! Yeah, buddy. Okay.